Welcome back, ZRK fans, to the December 2019 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, and we have the lower bracket finals, or losers finals, or whatever. Steel Blue versus Dice on, or Dice 68, rather, on Eye of Horus. It's going to be still best of one, and we are going to be seeing these players do what they can to try to go up against Ultra Godzilla. Whoever wins this goes against Ultra Godzilla for potentially winning the tournament, although they aren't exactly confident about that. But... Whoever loses this gets third place. Steel Blue going for rovers, and Dyth is going for tanks because it's Dyth. So yeah, people were asking in the chat, FFC primarily, asking in the chat, why does Dyth go for tanks? Frankly, I don't know. I mean, it's just the idea is, why do you go for a slow factory when your opponent can expand? And especially on a map like this where it's really easy to get 30 metal per second. Actually, actually more than that. I was counting it for the plus twos. 12... 20. Yeah, no, 30 metal per second. Easily. I, I, even with all the raiding that Dyth likes to do, it's going to be very difficult to contain Steel Blue in any meaningful way on this map. I, I well, well, they'll try, that's for sure, but the dart, dart is already here, and that's the thing. The dart completely stuffs the Kodachi. I, the last, Matthew Whitman had a hard time last time because the dart wasn't there, and we do see there's that set target micro again. Being used fairly well, but unfortunately, it is not going to be enough that those darts do come in here. The Scorcher is able to catch up, and that is where death happens. Scorcher comes in, and that kills off the Kodachi dead. So without the Kodachi, Dice doesn't have a lot of ways of stopping Steel Blue from expanding, and without stopping Steel Blue from expanding, Steel Blue is going to be able to completely out-macro Dice in a couple minutes. That is where it comes in. That's where the problem is. That's why tanks, or at least Kodachi harassment strategies don't entirely make sense on a map like Eye of Horus. It'd be neat if Dice was able to make this work, but I just don't know. I feel like Steel Blue, they have the right idea, they have the darts, they have the Scorchers, they know exactly how to counter the Kodachi. I could see maybe if Dice swapped over to Blitz, maybe? I don't know. Blitz, would, Blitz wouldn't work especially well. It's also still expensive. I'm just trying to think, what would work? Ogres are an okay idea. And it looks like that's what Dyth is doing there. So you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to go for the harassment. Just going to send one more Kodachi just to see what can be got. And otherwise, go for mass expansion myself with a bit of defense off the Yogurts. That's about it. And that's all I can really do. That's it. Otherwise, Steel Blue is basically just going to destroy any attempt to harass. And that's all that Dyth otherwise had. Now, on the other hand, Dice Commander, it's not expanding. Again, this is the thing about Dice Micro, is that it's... The Micro is great. Dice Commander could be set up to queue a bunch of metal extractors in the process, though. Like, all this area over here could be just queued up. And it's not. They do have the area to the southeast being queued up, which is nice. They have a welder setting that up. But why the Commander isn't building up more, I think, is entirely a matter of multitasking. Like, this... This Kodachi is being used quite well. It's micro quite well. But... Unfortunately, it's being so focused on that Dyth simply does not have the APM left to help deal with their base and build that up. Because that's the thing with this, is that you kind of got to find the points in between the micro times to go back to base, queue up a bunch of stuff, and then go back to the micro. And that is the toughest part about this kind of high micro play. Well, okay, Diamond from pointing in the chat, they're seeing the Blitz counters the entire rover factory, and... I kind I would be willing to agree on advisement. Like, I don't know that's entirely true. It shouldn't be true. Like, that's... That'd be silly. But it... it you're not, you got a point. I mean, Blitz is a very strong unit. Not sure why Dyth has no faith in it. I, I do think... That, I Okay. I don't know that Blitz necessarily counters the entire rover factory, but I do think Dyth is sleeping on Blitzes. I think, that my, I think they're relying a bit too much on Ogres, which... We saw before it get countered by, countered by Fencer Ravager quite handily. And that's that's a fairly cheap combo to set up, and a fairly common combo, too. Blitz is harder to deal with for those units. It's kind of manageable with the right approach, but it's still... Yeah, it's hard to deal with. Rippers are a good option. I think Scorchers were kind of meant to counter them, but it's a weird situation with them. But there, at any rate, Ripper Spam is not what you normally see. That's sort of the thing, is that Ripper Spam is not sort of the typical rover approach. The typical rover approach is Fencer Ravager, which counters Ogres. So I don't really understand why 
it's Mass Ogre, let's be fair. I also don't understand why Steel Blue is just suiciding a bunch of darts and scorches into the Ogre, because that's what the Ogre is meant to counter. And for cost, it most certainly did. 500 metal compared to, what was it, like, I mean, you get rid of four scorches, you made cost, and it got rid of that plus several darts. Now that, that Ogre was worth it. And another one coming in here. If you had two Ogres, I mean, the thing is, it's only one Ogre alone. If you had two, two or more Ogres, it'd be over. These scorches wouldn't have a chance. Just the one ogre makes it a little bit easier to do this, but that's... That's all. I mean, I, I don't understand the logic here, because that's... That was a lot of Scorchers that just went down to basically nothing. At the same time, Dyth is losing a few Metal Extractors here and there. They are... Oh, wow, they lost a Constructor to a Scorcher or two. Sheesh. Like I said, I don't understand why the commander isn't really doing anything over there. Because like, the commander, they do have the strongest weapon. They can just go. They can do what they want. So I don't know. Okay, pointing out, people pointing out in chat that Darth Vader can test splits. And that is a fair point. And I kind of realizes that's not much they can do anyway, so Steel Blue just takes it for essentially a macro victory. I mean, to be fair, Dyth was kind of keeping their commander in the base and not really doing much, but... Yeah, that's, that actually is the thing. That's actually the thing when you're playing tanks, too. Because of the fact that welders are so expensive, you do need to use your commander to expand. Like, you normally would, but... It, yeah, you're dealing with... Uh, okay, 200 is not super expensive, but compared to 120 or sub-100 for bot factories... Yeah, 200 metal for a constructor is only beaten by 300 metal for cranes and wasps starting air. But those fly. And I mean, the welder does defend itself, but so does the commander. You kind of need that extra little bit of production capacity for expansion. And Dyth, I never really see use that. But anyway, that is that. Dyth, congratulations on getting second or third place. And Steel Blue gets to go and try their hand at a rematch against Ultra Godzilla. See if they manage to do that. It will be a bit of a tough match. It will be best of three, though. I think the way it's going to work is that it's best of three in lieu of having a bracket reset. So if Steel Blue wins, I think it's just best of three. If they win the best of three, they win. If Ultra Godzilla wins the best of three, they win. It's not going to be a Steel Blue wins, then we have to do another best of three. I think. I'm not 100% sure. Fairly certain that's how it's going to work. But anyway, we're going to be getting on to that in a couple minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs> 